Welcome back. This is tutorial movie number two, in which we cover how to assess, plan and issue orders. I assume that you have already done tutorial movie number one, getting started. If you haven't done so already, launch the game and open the tutorial return to St. Vith scenario, playing as the allies with realistic orders delay. In the tutorial movie number one, getting started, we covered how to access information on your objectives, friendly and enemy forces, and terrain, all key factors in any military assessment. We'll look at factors in more detail in a minute. For now, click on the crossing icon here. Note that its details are displayed in the sidebar. It's a simple crossing point, meaning it's a potential crossing but currently it does not have a bridge or ferry. It's also unprimed, meaning no demolition charges have been laid. Right click on it and you'll see that motorised cannot cross here. Click on the crossing south of Steinbrook. Note it's a heavy road bridge and again it's unprimed. Right click and note that motorised can cross here at 20% their normal movement rate. This crossing is the only one that provides us with a way across to Lomas Vila and our other objectives. This is a key factor in your assessment. A factor is a piece of information that causes you to do something, otherwise it's irrelevant, even if it is interesting. Use the so what test. For example, there's only one crossing available that provides access to our objectives. So what? We must secure that crossing in order to achieve those objectives. The enemy are defending the crossing. So what? We need to attack through them to secure it. Click on the nearest enemy. Note that its fatigue level is 42 percent. So what? He's defending and not going anywhere and it's fresh enough to fire back. So this is not relevant and hence not a factor. On the range ring button on the display toolbar until it shows A per. A per stands for anti-personnel so this is now displaying anti-personnel range rings. Note there are three green range rings Green is for anti-personnel. The bright green outer ring is the maximum range. The medium coloured middle ring is its effective range ring, where it can deliver 33% of its maximum firepower. The dark inner ring is its ambush range, where it can deliver 67% of its maximum firepower. Select another unit and note that its effective and ambush ranges are the same. Change the range display to show all. Note the red range rings are for its anti-armour firepower. Select the units on the enemy front line. As these are for infantry units we can ignore their maximum range rings as these are only for one or two heavy machine guns within the units. Instead, focus on these effective range rings. The area within this is lethal ground. So what? So you don't want to deploy for your assaults within this area. You want to form up outside of it. So you need a plan. I recommend you plan ahead for one day. If we have a look over at our objectives, we can see that the Steinbrook objective is active now and that the Lomasfield objective is active from midday. The other two objectives aren't active until day two. So your objectives for day one should be to secure the crossing at Steinbrook, 
and secure the ground of tactical importance at Lomasvila. You can't do anything about Lomasvila until you've secured Steinbruck. So your plan should be done in sequence. First, secure the crossing at Steinbruck, and second, secure Lomasvila. For phase one, the attack on Steinbruck, I recommend you attack with two battalions up and keep one in reserve. I suggest you, you attack with your infantry from the 318th and your mechanised infantry, the 51st Battalion, and keep the 35th Tank Battalion in reserve. I can't emphasise enough the importance of maintaining a reserve. Without a reserve, as an operational commander, you have very little means to influence the battle. Once you commit a reserve, try and create another by stripping forces from quiet sectors. This is not always possible, but it's a good rule to adhere to. Support your attack with fires from your two artillery battalions, the 22nd and the 66th. These two artillery battalions can shoot a long way. Change the range rings to show bombardment. Zoom out. And as you can see, this is the maximum bombardment range, the blue ring. The black ring is the minimum bombardment range. In other words, the unit cannot fire at targets within this area. We'll change the range rings to none for now. To get this attack underway, we're going to be issuing orders to just four units. Namely, the CCA Headquarters, Combat Command Alpha, and the three battalion headquarters, the 51st, 1st 318th, and the 35th tank. Unlike other games, where you have to micromanage every unit, in BFTB, the AI is powerful enough to manage your subordinates and do a reasonable job. It won't always do everything exactly as you would like, but then again, most real-world subordinates don't do that either. You can, however, trust it to do a reasonable job. Select the 35th Tank Battalion Headquarters, your reserve. Select the Defend order from the toolbar, and click on top of the Headquarters. Note this place is an order icon on top of it. Its type is Defend, and it has a square perimeter box around it. Note also that the sidebar displays the various task options for your order. Select the in situ formation. This will have the force defend where it is. Otherwise the AI might choose something like V and the force would redeploy. You want them to be fresh and ready for action at a moment's notice so let's leave all other options as is, the defaults are fine. Note that the unit information box at the top right of each of the subordinates is now pink, indicating that new orders are on the way. Well done! You've just issued your first order. Select the 51st Armoured Infantry Battalion Headquarters. Select the attack order from the toolbar. Hold down the shift key. Click on the map just north of the headquarters. This will place an attack order icon on the map. But this is only going to be our forming up place or FUP. Release the shift key and click again just north of the Steinbrook objective. Note you now have an attack order icon on the objective at Steinbrook and you have a reorg icon at the forming up place and a yellow line linking the two. Check the secure crossing option as you want to assign the engineers to unprime the bridge and make it safe from enemy demolitions. Check the artillery direct support only option to ensure our assigned mortars only fire in support of our units in this attack. 
select none from the rest options there'll be no rest for these guys during this attack leave all other options as is congratulations you've just issued your first attack order select the first 318th infantry battalion headquarters click A the keyboard shortcut for attack hold the shift key down and click once just north of the battalion headquarters to set the FUP release the shift key click again just north of the objective and this will place your attack icon select the same options as we did for the 51st infantry battalion i.e. secure crossing artillery direct support only and no, no rest well done that's attack number two last but by no means least we need to issue orders to the rest of Combat Command A. Select CCA Headquarters. Hit the D key, that's the shortcut for Defend. Click on the CCA Headquarters. Note this places a Defend icon on top of it. Choose In Situ Formation. So that's it. The AI will manage the details for you, including allocating the units to the various sub-attacks, determining the support and reserve tasks, and coordinating the timings. It will also ensure that the artillery battalions go on call when they defend. This means that they can fire in support of the assaulting units. At this stage, it's wise to save the game. Click on the menu button select save game and we'll enter a name here like tut at start with orders hit the save button now it would be tempting to just start running the game but first I recommend you should consider the likely enemy reactions to your plan, the trigger events for these reactions, and how you're going to respond. We'll cover these in the next movie, Tutorial Movie 3, Contingency Planning. See you then.